Councilor Angeloni? Here. Councilor Caprio? Here. Councilor Duty? Here. Councilor Esposito? Councilor Farnish? Here. Councilor Fucci? Councilor Siena? Here. We have a motion to approve the October 2nd regular meeting, Water Pollution Control Authority and Town Council. I move. Second. Moved by Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Roll call. Mayor Kimbalera? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Duty? Yes. Councilor Fonin? Yes. Councilor Fiena? Yes. Motion to move the October 19th special meeting, Town Council. I'll move it with the following corrections under item one, roll call. Um, you need to delete Deputy Mayor Wentworth, Councillor Esposito, and Councillor Fucci, as they were not present. I'll second it. Moved by Councillor Angeloni, seconded by Councillor Duty with the corrections. Roll call. Mayor Kimbalora? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Duty? Yes. Councilor Fonny? Yes. Councilor Siena? Yes. Item three, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. Uh, item A, Economic Development Commission. The Economic Development Commission is now meeting twice a month. Um, they have decided to host a forum in January for all of you, planning and zoning and the public. Um, on the Route 80 and the future development of Route 80. So in the next few months, they're going to be planning the forum, charrette, however they're going to do that. So that will be their big project coming up. Okay. Um, item B, Permanent Project Building Committee. I don't think any of this were here, but I have an update if you want me to do it real quick that was given to me. Um, they did vote to um, approve the roof for the school, so now, as of tomorrow, we'll be signing off on that grant information. That will be going over to the state, so that'll be another part of the project and the reimbursement that's gonna be tied up. Um, they had some discussion on the new boiler for the high school and the conversion to natural gas. Right now, some of them are um, feeling they do wanna go towards a dual burner, but you know they still wanna bring it back and talk. Uh, more about that. And uh, Bill Chody was at their meeting talking about the high school roof project. He um, did comment that the insulation board has collapsed and the membrane is being pushed up by fasteners, which will make matters worse on the old roof. You know, he's talking a lot about the flooding that we had that came in. Um, and the uh, uh, board has a couple of ideas on how to put on a new roof. But again, it will have to go out to bid. Um, they did talk a lot about the leaks that we had during the last major storm. Um, those have been, uh, they, they responded very well to the roofing company, and two of them came in and they have been fixed. So we just have to wait for another driving rain, I guess, to see if that is a true or not. Um, and uh, Olympics um, starts Monday on Community Center. And we should have their full schedule by Friday. Uh, and in case we do need anybody for environmental issues, because there is asbestos on that form, um, we have Fuss and O'Neill who's on a state contract that we'll be able to use. But I'll keep you posted if we think that needs to happen. Thank you. Um, item C, Potato and Corn Festival. Um, there's no new report. You'll have that in November. But there was a request for certain invoices, and those are in your packet in front of you tonight mainly electrical uh, amusement, uh, golf cart, food, Sign. signs, yep. Yeah. So they're in the packets in front of you to see. Okay. Uh, emergency Communications Committee. We're trying to pick a date. We got some dates for um, Quantipoc Valley Tour. So we're going to get that together. And Finance Committee. I'm going to defer to Council Angela. Um, Finance Committee met last week. Uh, there are a number of items on our agenda uh, later on in regards to contingency transfers. Um, what those are is in regards to the um, new software for the tax office. Um, it's an online web service and you can also do payments online all year round rather than just during the two tax months, the two big collection months. and. 
then the other item that's on our agenda is the creation of the 1% Board of Ed Capital Fund and the refunding of the bonds um, in, the, in the bond um, resolutions for to go ahead with our capital projects. And that was it. Thank you, Ruth. Um, item four, town manager's report. Uh, yes, one other item that I had brought up at the finance committee um, was the trees. We have a lot of trees that need to come down. There are safety issues. Uh, so there may be an issue of going over what was budgeted for this particular year, but we've got to get those trees down or liability situations. So I just wanted to let you know um, I'm going to have Fran at least start taking care of those before winter comes, but there may be an overage in that account. So I just wanted to let you know on that. Um, I did put something in management report about Wall Field. Uh, we do have a proposal to move forward with the restrooms. Uh, and if everyone is good with that, we're ready to move ahead because it does look great. If you haven't seen it, it looks fantastic. Um, so if there's no issues and everybody's read the memorandum, um, we'll move forward. If anybody has questions, you know, Kirk can answer those tonight too. Um, Chitsey Drive, we uh, have made an award. Uh, we should have a schedule. We're hoping it's going to get started ASAP before Old Man Winter comes in and we can get all that um, resolved. Uh, Mottos, um, they should be able to start Monday. We had an issue with the demolition permit. We've got all that resolved. So they should be starting um, next week. It'll only take a day and a half to two days. And lastly, the explanatory text is in. There's some in the back. They're also at the libraries, community center, senior center, and they're going into all the absentee ballots. But if anyone needs to pick them up, I put one in front of each of you, but um, town clerk's office. So unless there's questions, that's what I have tonight. Okay. All right. Item five, community events and presentations. Um, this evening, um, we'd like to give a presentation of thanks from myself, the council, and the town of North Brantford to Al Rose for many dedicated years. He served our town, both on the council, the community, and he's done a lot behind the scenes. And uh, if I can ask you to come up here, Al. that this is the second one I've accepted. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean that I'm not going to come back sometime. Um, I'm waiting for you. When my schedule uh, frees up a little bit. Um, I'll come back. But again, uh, you know, I have faith in you guys and uh, you, know, you do a good job. And uh, um, I appreciate, as well as I'm sure the rest of the town does too, the time that you guys put in, you know, volunteer and it's a lot of work you basically make a lot of enemies but you you keep us right side up so thank you Thanks. I'm going out to dinner with my wife <laughs> <laughs> Item six, uh, citizen statements, petitions, and correspondence. Um, Mr. Mayor, this is Part of the community presentations. Uh, this one is on the agriculture commission having a tractor pull this weekend. Uh, the 20th at the farm. Uh, the tractor is showing up at 8 and it starts pulling at 9. So if you want to get a little taste of agriculture and fresh air, come on down. Have a good time. <laughs> and Cliff, where was it again? Uh, Auger Farm. Farm. Forest Road. Forest Road. Come on down and enjoy it with us. Okay. Are there any other statements? Uh, Mr. Mayor, you just have a letter. No. Yeah. And one other thing um, on the 18th, which is, um, I believe, Thursday morning at 730. 
Um, at 7.30, um, there's going to be Meet the Candidates, um, Senator Ed Meyer, um, Cindy Cartier, and State Representative Vincent Candelora will be here at Town Hall Chambers. Uh, 7.30 a.m. will be light refreshments and coffee. Um, there will be a brief question and answer. <clears throat> I have a letter here addressed to the Council. Dear Town Council members, have you ever toured the present day police station building on Forest Road and view the conditions of this building? I attended a police commissioner's meeting on Tuesday, October 9th. I left that meeting disgusted from hearing about the deplorable conditions that exist in this present day building. So on Friday, October 12th, I took a tour of the police department building. They were right about the conditions mentioned at the meeting. For example, here are some of my observations. The rooms were like small cramped cubicles. The slope of the stairs that were going down to the basement was hazardous when walking down them. There was water being pumped into a sink because of moisture on the basement of the building. Lockers for the officers looked like high school lockers. Jail cells were dark and hard to monitor with cameras. An air conditioner was running to help cool down an enclosed generator area. <coughs> Small and adequate rooms, work rooms were being used by the officers. Showers were not working. Police cruisers were left outside in the rain. Winter months, ice covers them. These are only some of my observations. So I feel that each town council member needs to investigate the police station building at a convenient time to see their own firsthand observations. When the town can build a multi-dollar looking baseball field behind the police station, I feel that we can improve the public safety with a better police station. Perhaps we could have the emergency headquarters attached to the police building instead of where it is now. It would be located closer to Evergreen Woods in North Brantford. Finally, I would like the town council to ask the state Senator Ed Meyer, our state representative Vincent Candelora, for a grant to help out the town with this problem. Sincere, James Dwyer. Um, item 7, uh, resignations and appointments. Um, item A, hazardous waste and recycling committee. Um, Dr. Michael Martin, unaffiliated of 76 Walnut Street, Northford, is interested in being a member of this committee. Appointment would be until December 31st, 2012. Uh, this was sent by Mary Bigelow. Mr. Mayor, I'll move the appointment to Dr. Michael Martin the Hazardous Waste and Recycling Committee for a term to expire on December 31st, 2012. Second. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Wentworth, seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Roll call. Mayor Candelora. Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Yes. Councilor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Caprio. Yes. Councilor Duty. Yes. Councilor Esposito. Yes. Councilor Fawney. Yes. Councilor Gucci. Yes. Councilor Yes. Uh, item 8. Unfinished business discussion and action. Um, item A, capital projects, bonding ordinances. I'm going to turn this over to Anthony because I'm going to be too. Because we have new resolutions, so maybe we can go through those and decide which have to be voted on. Uh, I could guess tonight I did put some uh, new resolutions out. related to the upcoming new project. The language that's in the resolution that were passed out tonight is the identical first paragraph, the header, if you will, to each of the resolutions prepared by Robinson and Cole. There's one key blurb. If you look at the last sentence in each of these motions on the, on the capital projects, it references the motion attached and in its entirety. If you recall a couple of years ago, we had to act on resolutions twice because that clause wasn't in there. So the, the motions that were passed out this evening are the ones I'd like you to act on. In addition, besides the three bond resolutions, there is the 2.52. And the other thing I want to tell you, too, is the numbers look different than what you've seen previously. 
they've been bumped up to allow for contingency and issuance costs. The roof, for example, was estimated at 2.4 million. The bond council drew it up at 2.520, which again allows for a contingency and the issuance cost. Uh, 388 for the emergency communication upgrades, that lumps the three items, the uh, police narrow banding, public works narrow banding, and the work to the tower on Reed's Gap Road East. Those are lumped together. The 651 is the two projects at public works. There was the, the, the building of the second half of the sander shed and replacement of the roof on the cold storage building. That's why the numbers are, are kind of different than what you've seen previously. So those three items need to be acted on independently. And then the Bond Council has asked for two 824 referrals to P&Z uh, for the two large projects for the, for the um, high school roof. You did an A24 referral previously to P&Z for the capital improvement plan. This is an A24 referral solely for the purpose of the bond resolution. That's why it seems kind of duplicative, but it's not really a different animal. So there's an A24 referral for the public works improvements, and there's an A24 referral for the um, high school roof. So in effect, there's five motions you have to act on tonight. Mm -hmm. Three bond resolutions and two A24 referrals. Are you saying that they have to go back to the planning and zoning again? They, they need an A24. In order to do the bonding, they need to have an A24 referral and a blessing from planning and zoning, yes. And if we get this approved tonight by the council, it'll be on Thursday night's uh, P&Z agenda. And what was that sentence you said that had to be in there? I if you see on, on, in, on the last sentence, and each one says, oh, in its entirety. Okay, thank you. The, 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 sometimes the motions don't reference the document in its entirety, and the bond council doesn't like that, so they like to see that word in there. I'll make a motion to uh, do an 824 referral to the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission on the plan and design and construction and repairs to or replacement of the roof at the North Brantford High School. Second. Moved by Councilor Judy, seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Um, I just have a couple of questions on all of these. Uh, these we're sending these to P and Z so, so that we could apply for the the, the uh, to borrow the money. Is that right. the bond money? Right. Now, what happens if if we go to get the bond money and we're not able to get the bond money? There'd be no reason why we couldn't get the bond money. The only, the only it would be the, the rate we'd pay. It'd be the it would just be a matter of what the rate is. Correct. Okay. And the rates, as we know now, the short-term rates are very favorable. So, uh, so it isn't like we would go back and they we, we're only going to get part part of the money, and we would have to take things in or out of it. No. Okay. Not a problem. Roll call. Mayor Kindelora. Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Yes. Councilor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Caprio. Yes. Councilor Judy. Yes. Councilor Esposito. Yes. Councilor Fawning. Yes. Councilor Fucci. Yes. Councilor Siena. Yes. I'll make a second referral, A24 referral to the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission on the plan and design and construction improvements to the public works facility in the town of North Brantford. Second. Moved by Councilor Judy, seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Judy? Yes. Councilor Escondido? Yes. Councilor Fawning? Yes. Councilor Fulci? Yes. Councilor Siena? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the North Brantford Town Council adopts the resolution appropriating 651000 for the planning, design, and construction of improvements to the public works facility in the town of North Brantford and authorizing the issuance of $651,000 in bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose in its entirety as attached. Second. Moved by Council Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Judy? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawning? Yes. Councilor Fuji? Yes. Councilor Siena? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the North Brantford Town Council adopts the resolution appropriating $2,520,000 for the planning, design, and construction of repairs to and or replacement of the roof at North Brantford High School and authorizing the issuance of $2,520,000 of bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose in its entirety as attached. Second. Question on that is, 
that 2.2 million, is that for the high school roof? Is that what that is? Correct. To replace the entire roof? Correct. Of, of what? Because what we did was, pat yeah, yeah, other than the patches and stuff like that. This is the gross amount. This is still subject to our school construction grant reimbursement process. We have to appropriate the entire amount, and then we'll get. And then we'll see what we get. So yeah. it's possible we get, what would happen if we got money back? We're going fund balance, or? No, we would, we would just, we're going to ban the. lower. Okay. They're going to be permanently bonded at the end, will be less. Okay. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Duty? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawnen? Yes. Councilor Fucci? Yes. Councilor Sienna? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the t North Brantford Town Council adopts the resolution appropriating $388,000 for upgrades and improvements to the emergency radio communications in the town of North Brantford and authorizing the issuance of $388,000 of bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose in its entirety as attached. Second. Moved by Councilor An Angeloni, seconded I, by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. <laughs> I have another. I just have a question on that. that that's something that's being a federal mandate that yes. we have till the end of this, we're supposed to be done this yeah, year? Everyone, okay, good. I just want so everybody knows that's listening at home. All righty. Thank you, Councilor. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Duty? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawning? Yes. Councilor Fuji? Yes. Councilor Sienna? Yes. Um, item B. Hang on one second. Yeah. Yep. Anthony, I have one question. I'm going through your CIP request here, capital improvement. Yes. And I see a fire second rescue. That's and eliminated. That's eliminated? Didn't didn't we give you a rescue last year for a truck? That second rescue was in there as a placeholder if the money that was foreseen from the water company, if there was ever an additional windfall of... That would have went out what, to Northford? Uh, yes. Okay, there and we still got the heavy rescue coming here, right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, item B, update to the <coughs> benefit plan. Well, We're going to table. Item C, amendments to Chapter 123, Proposed Ordinance 2012-01 Building Construction. Um, yes, you had scheduled a public hearing for November 20th, and I'm asking that you uh, cancel that, and we are going to um, do a preparation for budget time instead of this point. Okay. I like the motion to, to table that item, or do we just have to cancel it? Cancel it, sorry. Do we need a motion? Remember. or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Wentworth, seconded by Councillor Esposito. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Duty? Yes. Councillor Esposito? Yes. Councillor Fawnin? Yes. Councillor Fucci? Yes. Councillor Siena? Yes. Um, item D, amendments to Chapter 84, proposed ordinance. 2012-02 purchasing ordinance. I don't think we can do that yet. Right. So um, we, we have a public so hearing. I got another five minutes, yeah. so um, I'll move on to nine. Um, a new business discussion and action. Um, I I guess, report or tax report? Yeah, I don't want to get into the insurance. Um, I'll go down to um, Good Auger Farmhouse. <laughs> Item B, uh, Auger Farmhouse. That was just to get clarification. In the past, you have rented that uh, building out. There were some issues. Um, it's been vacant, but before a winter comes in, we need to kind of know, do you want us to go back out and do a rental situation? Would you rather not, just so we know how to do oil? And, you know, I, 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 I have a couple of questions. Excuse me. Uh, what's the condition of the building right now? Is it rentable? Is it now? Yes. Yeah. Have we ever considered uh, getting a property manager to handle showing it? Uh, I don't know. Last time they advertised um, mainly on Craigslist, um, so it was all done in the house. Yeah. Wouldn't it be advantageous to you know, have a be a step back, have a property manager? Uh, 
to the advertising, get the uh, the tenants in there, collect the checks, and just pass the check off to us? I don't know. They, they, uh, there's a cost to that. I could look into it. It's only, I mean, it's only I one. It's one. Like 10%. The thing what? is, do we want the headache of being a landlord? Yeah, I know. Well, I know a little bit of the history of this, and I was going to share it with you. I mean, I know a lot of this fell onto public works and Franny with a lot of the issues. And finance with the collections. With the, right. Well, yeah. What exactly is it? Is it a, a, an apartment? Is it a no, it's whole house? house. Oh, it's a it's a family. House. It's right. a house. Right. We did before. We rented the house to, to like a family. Is that yeah. what we did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had issues with. Right. I don't think we've had a good experience. Right. Yeah, but renting. If we get a real estate property manager in there, handling it for us, all we do is collect checks. I mean, winter's coming. Somebody's going to have to pay for the oil. That's assuming the tenant tenders the checks. Uh, our last experience was, I think, we were about six months delinquent by the time we got them out. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bad experience. But that's I know, because we were handling it. I know there was some talk Is the of, housing authority capable of? No. No. no they don't have the I mean, I... I know there was some talk of possibly, like, the Ag Commission maybe using it as a meeting house. Uh, and I don't know if they were interested. Cliff's already shaking his head no. <laughs> <laughs> Want some input from me officially? Sure, if it comes to the mic. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Richard brought it up one time. And to be honest with you, we're going to concentrate on the barn. We really don't want to get into the house. I really wouldn't want to be a key holder. <coughs> I've heard the horror stories from Franny. His beeper went off day and night, right. holidays, weekends. When you become a landlord, you're a landlord 24-7, but unfortunately, it doesn't come under anybody's job title in the town. So guess who got all the calls? Franny. He got murdered. Yep. It wasn't a pleasant situation. It's, you know, so the Ad Commission, I, I personally, I work from home on my own home PC, and I keep my files and everything there. And it's just easier if I went down there, you know, it just, it, it wouldn't work for me, and I end up being the guy that kind of keeps track of what's going on while the farmers are busy farming. Uh, we definitely, I don't think, are interested in getting involved with the house. We're working forward slowly just on the barn, trying to keep that moving forward. So, mm -hmm. and I, I just wanted to bring, because, you know, when I was at the barn and stuff, Franny would stop by, and, and it was just, it was a nightmare for the town. And you're right. Do you want to get in that mess again? And, and once you get, and you know yourself, any family with kids, you, they don't have to pay rent, and you have to be very careful what you do when you try to get rid of them. And uh, any profit you made on the house, you end up in legal fees trying to get them out. And like, you know, and it's just, it's sad because it is a house, but it doesn't fit anybody's needs at this time. So from, uh, officially from the Ag Commission, I don't think we would want to get involved. What's overall condition in the house? I've never stepped foot in the okay, place, I, just, to I actually toured it. It's not too, too it's bad. It's not too, yeah, it's not too, too bad. You made but it, uh, make it a substation. If I heard right, there is, um, lead in there so Talking about you, have to, you can't rent for kids yeah right. then you know what we should probably just leave it empty if there's all those issues i would winterize it winterize it winterize not it. put oil in it and then we should always take a look at possible yeah, some stations <laughs> And if you know somebody looking for office space, you know, within one yeah. town. Uh, it wasn't something with Pam or something? Well, she was talking about doing an event there, but it's not going to be for this year. But I think at least that would buy us some time to come up with some options. Thank you, but no thank you, right, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> that helps me. <sighs> All right. You just can't turn the heat off because it'll fall apart. No, it'll winterize it. Um, okay, I have to open the public hearing to hear comments on the proposed ordinance 2012 02, <coughs> which amends Chapter 84 of the Code of the Town of North Brantford entitled Purchasing. Is there anyone here that has comments on this public hearing? Oh, well, I... I know you, you too. Okay, I, I just wanted to um, alert the council to a, a brief memo that I... an unsolicited memo uh, that was put in front of you. Um, I had one of the associates in the office um, take a look at this issue, and lo and behold, uh, it's our conclusion that uh, such an ordinance were to be passed, 
by the town would be illegal, not enforceable. It's almost identical to the one that the city of Danbury had, which was the subject of a, a court action and uh, in which it was declared illegal. Um, and so um, my recommendation is, is that, uh, uh, that the council not um, adopt this uh, ordinance. That's pretty easy. <laughs> Cliff. Stan, in lieu of an ordinance is no longer to be an ordinance available to anybody in town. Uh, I'd like to see a mailing list to go out to our local contractors. I did talk to a couple of them. I, I thought they were going to be here tonight. Maybe I heard about this and didn't show up. You know, and again, I, I bring up the point. They're, they're in town and they do dual functions being served on various emergency squads and stuff. So it would have been nice, you know, if we could have got something. But John makes it perfectly clear. So the next step is maybe ask the building department even or the purchasing people, even though they're tech savvy, some of these guys are not tech savvy. So whatever it takes to get the word out to our local guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other statements, comments? Okay, I guess we'll <laughs> close the public hearing at 735. Go back to item A, um, State of Connecticut Health Plan. At your special meeting last week, you did have a presentation from the staff of the Comptroller's Office on the Partnership Health Plan, which uh, municipalities can now join. I believe there's two members as of right now. And you had asked for the amount of savings the town was projected to have. And right now, the Board of Education, uh, through Dominic, who is here this evening, uh, 262,000 is projected, 424, and for the town, 167,000 is projected. Um, we do have representatives. Uh, using the latest cost, which right. is actually the 370. The which one? The 370. Okay. Um, the only reason I gave the, the 260 model was Don, that was would actually. Would you mind coming up to the mic just so that people on TV could hear you? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. Because the, the original cost projection that they had given us some months ago was um, it came out to a savings of about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. It's now up to about three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. The reason being they have continued to look at our experience, which has continued to go down. So it we're sort of with the with the latest number we're kind of comparing apples and oranges. However, those numbers would be real based on today's dollars um, if we were to get the same renewal rate from Anthem for the following year. So the, the 369 is based on the figures they gave us at so, Tuesday night, yes, the, the cost correct. per so package? Those are real. Okay. Those are real. okay. And the 262 was based on the original, original numbers that they gave you. Was, as I said, that was based on the data that was obviously much closer to what Anthem's renewal was based on. Had our experience been going up, <coughs> then you know likely the savings instead of getting bigger would have gotten small. And the the savings does that include um, assuming a dental plan and a vision plan with the medical? Because I know those were the two optional yeah, those, pieces. There's it it assumes one. It I'm I'm not really sure. I didn't pen, I didn't okay. spend a lot of time on those because those may actually have to be tailored to the other contracts that we have in place. But they're um, nominal. But they're they're not a large a large amount of money. The bulk is from the medical. Right. Okay. And Don, most of your contracts, if we didn't make a decision on this health insurance tonight, and let's say down the road, it's comparable or if not better, is this something we could adopt later on? Oh yeah. I mean, what what would what typically has to happen is most of the contracts have some sort of language about changing carriers. The teacher's contract is, there, is actually very specific when it comes to changing carriers. Um, and there's a process that we go through, but basically we give them the contract, they have the opportunity to object, and there's actually a framed arbitration question within the teacher's contract. 
Um, so, you know, there isn't a specific time in which you could invoke it. So if it moved forward, what would be the earliest date considering <coughs> these, t these time frames? if you decide January 1st is probably a push but it might be doable and of course part of it will depend on whether there's an objection or not okay plus as we talked about earlier there's things that are still negotiable you know if we want to move ahead with it there's a penalty if you don't do the complete Thank um, you, you know preventative work that would be negotiable because that's not a part that's up to us so there still are some portions of it that are negotiable And there are representatives from the state. Katie's here and Tracy's here this evening if you do have questions. And I also put, um, Katie had given to me, depending on when we join, how long the lock-in rates are for. So obviously if you join January 1st, it's an 18th month rate guarantee. If you join another period, it won't be as long. Well, you have in your memo here, it says if we join for December 1st, 2012, the rates would renew on July 1st, 2013. Yeah, Katie, that's correct. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, so we wouldn't get an 18-month if we join for December 1st, but we get an 18-month if we join on January 1st of 2013? What we would do is um, look at the, the claims experience going you know, up to date, and we could do an 18-month rate. It may change slightly, but not very much. Well, 18 months from December of 2012 wouldn't put us at July 1st of... If you started January 1st, you'd be Right, so that would put us to July of 2014. Right. Mm -hmm. But then uh, it says if we did it for December 1st, 2012, we wouldn't get an 18 month. We'd only get six months. Correct. Right. Okay. For thinking like that, that may be really scary to explain it's just totally illogical why if you go in a month earlier, the lock-in is for seven months, and if you go in a month later, you the lock-in is for 18 months. Right. That's what doesn't make sense. two towns in this plan, and those kind of rules govern. I'm really attracted by the cost savings, but I am put off by A, the newness of the plan, B, some of it being a little bit arbitrary, and quite frankly, my biggest concern is our prior experience with state sponsored plans that have come back by <coughs> No, you don't have to. I think it's just at some point, you know, uh, Don, you're in negotiations, I'm right. in so still negotiations. If the teachers object to it, then we got a whole mess on our hands, so what's the sense of going forward right now? Yeah, I'm just thinking that if you don't want to do it, that just puts a whole different and not that I need it tonight, by any means, but that just puts a whole different spin on things, and we can, we can both go forward in a different direction. Why are we taking the meeting and see what other information we get? What? Table it till the next meeting and see what other information we get. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion to table it till the next meeting. Any second? I think Penny Scott is a good one. Is it possible to present, is, is it a big burden to present this to the Board of Ed? Uh, employees done and see if they object to it? No. That'll tell us something right there. And that'll save us a lot of evaluation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's, you know, if, if, if the sense is, well, I mean, I, I, I imagine we could even do it on an exploratory basis if that's, you know, because obviously um, we don't have that many people that we're dealing with, so it wouldn't be a huge issue. Right. And if it's going to be a total revolt, there's no sense in <laughs> going forward, obviously. Put the feelers out. Okay. <coughs> All right. uh, moved by Councillor Busey, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Duty? Yes. Councillor Antito? Yes. Councillor Fawning? Yes. Councillor Fucci? Yes. Councillor Siena? Yes. Um, item C. 1% capital fund transfer, um, Board of Education. This is um, actually a two-part item. 
you recall at budget time there was discussion uh, regarding the creation of a 1%, up to 1% of the Board of Education's uh, budget, if it was unspent, could be put into a capital project fund. And I kind of delineated the items, as I recall them, uh, some of the parameters that were set up at that time. Uh, namely, I'll read them out, the Town Finance Department and Board of Ed Finance must agree on a year in balance. Assuming there are unexpended funds, an amount of these unexpended funds not to exceed 1% of the Board of Education's adopted budget for that given fiscal year can be transferred into an account on the town's general ledger to be solely used for capital projects for the Board of Education. Item three, the Board of Education should then submit it to the Town Council for their approval, a listing of the proposed expenditures of these funds. Uh, step four, the town's finance department will charge the expenses for said projects to the new 1% BOE capital projects fund and provide the Town Council and Board of Education with financial reports to identify the expenditures and reflect the remaining balance. And then the last one, this process is subject to review and approval annually by the Town Council. That's how I recall the discussion at the budget time. But if there's any other changes they want to make to those parameters, uh, now's your chance to change the guidelines, if you will. And then step two of the motion is to uh, actually transfer, based on the June 2012 year end balance, uh, 68500 into that fund. Now the council says what projects that are going to be approved and where it's going to be done off the list? That's correct. Okay. I'm clear. That's not with the guideline at, at the budget time. Right. So I'm not sure. So again, if there's any of these you know, parameters you want to change, now's your chance to change the parameters. Otherwise, it's going to be this is the way that this is the rule that's going to be in place. So if you don't like the they don't that's, like, that's a whole separate fund just for capital. That's correct. It'll be on our books and our capital reserve fund. We'll have it segregated out for uh, BOE capital expenditures. Um, board will submit a list to you folks and you'll bless them and then we'll take the money out of there as the projects get, get completed. I'm satisfied. I'd like to make a motion that the North Brantford Town Council establishes the 1% Board of Education Capital Fund allowable per Connecticut General Statutes 10-248A and pursuant to the criteria listed above. Second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Esposito. Roll call. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the Town Council instructs the Treasurer Finance Director to transfer sixty eight thousand five hundred from the Board of Education's remaining balance as of June 30th, 2012 to the newly created 1% BOE Capital Projects Fund. Second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Esposito. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Judy? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawnin? Yes. Councilor Pucci? Yes. Councilor Siena? Yes. <coughs> contingency transfers. There are uh, two items under 9D for contingency transfers. Uh, the first, Councilor Angeloni alluded to before regarding the online uh, tax payments. If you desire to pay your taxes online in North Brantford currently, that's only allowed in the current months of collection in January and July. Uh, a static file is sent to a third party that we use. If you want to pay your tax payments, you go to that website theoretically and you make the payments. Uh, our software vendor has a module uh, used by quite a few towns that allows for year-round ability to pay taxes with a credit card online. Uh, it allows the, the the, the bugaboo with the first one is that you can't look back to prior years. This is actually a file that's updated every night through our software. So if you were to go on there right now and you had delinquent taxes from 2008, let's say theoretically 2009, whatever it was, you can get the balance as of right now with the, with the correct interest amount and so on. And so it, it, it's the goal in talking to the town of Winchester, uh, she has uh, a little bit small, she's about 11,000 people. She has 2,500 of, of her users uh, already paying taxes through this system online. So it, it's, it's convenient. 
uh, another issue that happens is you get the bill in January, in July, let's say, mm -hmm. and you misplace it. So in August, you find the bill, you send it into the tax department with the same amount. Well, obviously, there's a month of interest that's delinquent on there. So what has to happen is, let's say, for sake of argument, it's a $100 bill and it becomes 105 with interest. You send $100 in. So they, they have to go and apply the $100, 95 to principal, or uh, 5 to interest, and then make another copy of the bill, put it in the mail, send it out to you and saying, hey, excuse me, sir, you owe us $5 more because you were late. This eliminates that. They can go online as of the day they find the bill and say, okay, I found the bill in July, maybe it's August, September, whatever it is. I can go online and get the final number as of today and pay the accurate number. So it eliminates a lot of aggravation, a lot of people coming into the office with incorrect amounts. It also allows for um, sometimes title searchers will come and they need a copy of the tax bill to prove that someone paid the taxes. They can get it online with this as well. So it, its goal is to streamline operations, uh, improve collections in the department by making it more uh, conducive to the taxpayer to stay at home, pay their taxes, no matter when the year is, the service will be available versus if you go on our website now, big red block comes up that says, sorry, not available anymore until next collection season. So that's the goal of, this, of that one. The second one is a 4700 remote desktop server. is actually a function of uh, the upgrade you folks approved for the financial software. Uh, because it's a Windows-based system now, the remote buildings, police, fire, public works, uh, recreation, library, and so on, you can't get into that data now. This is a separate box server that will sit in our server room, and they could actually dial remote uh, over the internet into that server into the, the data. Well, that was the original intention, and that worked out really well. A byproduct that's coming of this is a lot of the remote sites don't do file backups. Public Works, for example, is a, is a classic case. All his files and the secretary's files are on a, on a PC. PC, you know goes out, which happens sometimes. The files are all lost. One of the advantages of this program, of this separate server, is they can actually have our, their files on our file server, backed up nightly over the internet. So it provides a means of security. It provides for file sharing. When we do the budget annually every year, for the people in the building, we have what's called a general drive. It's a G drive. Everybody accesses it internally. Well, now the external folks can access that, this as well. Previously, I had to email their budgets out to them. They emailed the budget back. Now, if they're going to be able to share our, our network drives, Kurt has RICO, has the, the town maps. They can access that information remotely as well. Can't do that currently. So there's a lot of advantages besides the access to the new financial software that are going to come into this, uh, this second uh, Is this all going to be password protected? Oh, yeah. They yeah, yeah, have usernames and passwords. Correct. I'll make the motion. Resolve that the town manager hereby is authorized to appropriate from the reserve for contingency account number 101-4703-706-0000 and transfer the appropriate accounts as soon as possible for the following purposes as attached. Second. I don't know if it makes a big difference. I think it's at 706, Mike, rather than 760. Oh, 760. Sorry. Deep. We, we already pa we already uh, had passed this, right? No, we no. we passed. We, I thought we talked about. Th didn't we vote on this once before, and we're just voting now to appropriate no. the funds no. for it? No. Oh, we didn't. No. We passed on yeah. the software. Software. software previously. Okay. <laughs> That's the process of being installed. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the access for the remotes. Is Anthony, on this software, um, people paying by credit card is what type of fees? Are there associated? That's an excellent point. The the current situation allows um, it's driven by your bank, quite honestly. Um, they have I think it's a three percent fee added on. The, the, the current situation is no cost to the town. It's done through this firm called Official Payments. They're large in the tax collection world. Uh, they add three percent onto your bill if you pay with a credit card. If you pay with a debit card or give them a check number. I think it's like a five or three dollar flat fee. More advantageous. What the girl in Winchester, the woman in Winchester, said is that you can also work to reduce those fees. So if you want people truly to pay this method, maybe you negotiate a little better fee with your bank. So maybe they make it three, make it two. Well, you can go out to private merchant merchant services companies too. Correct. Some of those only charge between a half percent and one and a half percent. Correect. And so it does help give you more. But the, the charges on the end user, not on a not on That's the tower. Correct. That's correct. 
It's because it's one of those things, it's, a, it's almost like a user fee. It's not mm -hmm. fair if you don't use the system to cover in your tax bill, right. Mike uses it kind of thing. So gotcha. if you're going to use it, you're going to pay for it. It's like an ATM fee. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And will this also broaden into sewer fee besides taxes? Can you get into um, other areas? Or Yes, you should be able to. Yeah, any, any bill you have through the wall system, which will be tax and, and sewer, correct. You can pay online. That's a, that's a good point. No, they don't do check-in accounts or routing numbers or any of that stuff, right? It's just credit cards? Or you, I think you, live, you put an ACH number in. If you want to do a check number, you can do that as well. Right, right. ACH routing. Uh -huh. Usually it's a lesser fee typically than the credit card. Right. What will the backups be done on the router? Uh, you probably get daily, right? Or the, the, uh, the server, I'm sorry. The server's done nightly. It's done uh, through the internet to, through a company called Mosey that backs up all our data uh, on the internet. They're doing it now. Correct. All right. This just expands that data. The, the public works, for example, their files will be housed on our server, mm -hmm. backed up nightly, versus now they're just running free out there with no backup. Yeah, they're just checking to make sure that the backups are done off hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's done 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, we have motion by Councilor Duty, motion seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Is there any further discussion? Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Duty? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fonich? Yes. Councilor Fucci? Yes. Councilor Sienna? Yes. Councilor Sienna. yes. <coughs> Item E, financial reports. Financial report uh, before you for September, about a quarter of the way through the year. Uh, tax collections, again, the three items typically look at tax collections right on par with last year, 52.0%. Total revenue slightly ahead of last year, 40.7% of budget compared to 40.1%. And on the bottom, the expenditures, again, have been tracking a few percent higher. Uh, no departments are overexpended as of yet. And uh, the report is basically unremarkable. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to address them. What's going on with your investment income? Uh, investment income is an interesting dilemma. Uh, what we've done in the last couple of years is we have uh, gone to laddering out CDs. And uh, we've been going out probably two and a half to three years to gain about a 1% interest rate. Uh, so you're tying money up for three years for 1%. It's, it's surplus money we have in general fund based on tax collection. There's, there's a core amount of our fund balance that's surplus that we keep rolling over. Uh, the last renewals, however, uh, I will tell you that the three-year rate is down to about 0.77. So it, it's, it's, it's going to help us when we do our notes end of this month. Yeah. So we'll save some money there, but it's, it's really taking a bite of our interest income. Okay. So to get to get one percent, I think the last one I had I could have gotten was like a five or six year, and I chose not to go that far. I'm not sure what the interest rate's going to be in five or six years. I mean, the predictions are it's going to last, you know, at least two or three more years. It's not going anywhere. I, I don't want to go five or six up. years yet. So. Thank you, Anthem. Uh, item F: tax refunds. I'll move the tax refunds. Second. Moved by Councilor Duty, seconded by Deputy Mayor mm -hmm. Wentworth. Roll call. Mayor Kim Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Duty? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fonis? Yes. Councilor Fuji? Yes. Councilor Sienna? Yes. Item 10, Citizen Statements and Petitions. I'll make a motion to adjourn. To executive session. Executive session. Second. Into executive session. Second. I tried. Thank you.